Hello. Again. Uh, I'm gonna be doing, uh, magical range DPS today because of, a uh, somewhat specific request. So I guess I'm going a little bit out of order, but that's fine. Um, hopefully I'll be able to record these in session enough to where it, you won't have to wait too long for the next one, but, you know, we'll see. Anyway, we start with Black Mage because it's the top of the list. Um... Black Mage is not a job I like. It's not a job I did like at all, anyway, in, um... Shadowbringers... I don't know, I just didn't like leveling it. It's not the type of job I, I enjoy, you know? I'm not the DPS, like... Shoot giant fireballs kinda... kinda person, but... That will not change how I feel about these changes necessarily uh you know i'll try to not be too biased all right fire starter got buffed so now it lasts 30 seconds instead of 18 i have to be honest i don't remember ever ne even needing 18 seconds uh to use fire three after using fire, but it's it's a nice change, I guess. Um Transpose the same. Thunder got the same change. Um kind of actually. The potency changes on uh magic classes are actual potency changes instead of the physical ones. Because of like stat changes, so it changed potencies on physical classes, but on magic classes this going from 40 to 35 is actually a damage nerf from Shadowbringers. Sorta, of, kinda. Like, if you're level 80, it's a damage nerf. Um, but, it lasts for 3 more seconds. So that's nice. Uh, and the uh, not fire starter effect, I don't really remember what it's called. Thunder, Thunder Cloud? Something like that? Uh, that lasts for 40 seconds now, which honestly makes no sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. Like, when were you holding on to Thunder? Like, okay, I kind of maybe get it to increase it to 21 seconds, right? Because it lasts 21 seconds, so that would make sense. You wait for the whole, uh, thing to go off and then use it again. Um, granted, that's not actually the optimal way to use Thunder. You just want to use it as soon as you get it, because it does the DPS of your last Thunder when you use your Thundercloud proc, so I, I don't know. I don't know. A slightly less to manage, I guess. They figured with a slightly longer rotation, the extra couple seconds on it would be helpful but they didn't want the actual overall damage of the move to go up any, so it's probably about the same now. Blizzard 2! Alright, this is an amazing change. An amazing, amazing change. If you've played Black Mage, alright, which I assume if you're watching this part of the video, you have played Black Mage, otherwise there'd be no point. Well, uh, you know, I guess maybe you want to get into it, but... Blizzard 2 sucked. A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. It was an AoE around you, so you had to go into melee range to hit anything with it. And it did no damage at all. It did none. No damage. But now, now, it's ranged. Granted, the range isn't that long, but it's still ranged. Uh, so that means it will center around an enemy, which makes the AoE more effective, like I was talking about with the Dark Knight video before, and how... It's entering around you, makes it worse. It's good. It's good, and the potency was doubled. Which, admittedly, it still doesn't do, like, tons of damage, but it does enough to be a spell that you can cast now. Before, you didn't use it in your AoE rotation, even at early levels. There's just no point. You would literally just fire two until you were oom, um, then uh, transpose thunder 
then uh, transpose back, and then fire too. Granted, once you're like level 20-ish, transpose kind of becomes useless, but whatever, it's here. Uh, Scathe, wow. Uh, this is a worthless spell, it does nothing. Yeah. Alright, moving on. I'm gonna have to, like, wiggle my character a little bit in the background every so often, so... I don't get booted for being AFK. But I, I still have plenty of time. Uh, Fire 2 change. So, they increased the potency of Fire 2 as well. Fire 2 kinda sucked. I mean, look, once you got your real AoE skills, like, Freeze and Thunder 2... Uh, you didn't use Fire 2 pretty much anymore in your AoE rotation. Um, and later, once you got better fire skills, like, you definitely weren't using it. Because it kind of didn't do enough damage, and it kind of cost too much MP. Like, the combination of both of those things just sucks. Um. Yeah, so... I don't... The Enhanced Flare thing, I think, is new. So I'm gonna have to get into that later. But, uh, long story short, it does more damage now. So it's it's good early in the game still. So, nice. I mean, if you add that potency up with your Astral Fire stacks, you know, it, 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 it will do respectable damage. Uh... Potency increased by a lot, actually, on Thunder 2. Oh, but the DOT was nerfed by a lot. Interesting. I think this is just gonna be better. The duration's increased as well. Yeah. Uh, and they nerfed the cast time. Yeah, so... Maybe don't take my word on this, but it, I feel like this is just going to be better because you just... When you're taking on big packs of mobs, you just want to whack them with good damage and leave the dot on them, which this is just better at doing, and then hit them with other AoEs. Um, so it seems to just be a good AoE clear buff for uh, Thunder 2. I mean, it's worse on single targets now, but don't use it on single targets anyway you've got you've got thunder and later on thunder three so like don't 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 do that uh mono wards the same weird that mono ward exists to be honest but i'm kind of glad that it does because i would int so much on this class if it didn't monophon wow they reduced its cast time by 60 seconds that's a lot and honestly monophon wasn't that useful i have to be honest like but if you overcasted fire at early levels sometimes mana font was helpful and that's it all right cool <laughs> oh you learned fire three one level later now crazy um yeah so fire three uh you don't use this the spell pretend it's not here you just get it off of procs from fire one. There you go. Now you know, now you know. That's what fire three is. Um. Actually, it might still be good. Oh, no, no, it, it's not. You just use fire two now. Never mind. Right? Maybe. Because yeah, fire two gives, uh, actual fire three. And Blizzard 2 gives Umbral Ice 3. That's a, another huge change. I mean, if you play Black Mage, you know what that is. If you don't, uh, essentially it stacks up how much mana you get back. Uh, that's pretty much all it does until you get Umbral Hearts. And then Fire 3 is how much uh, damage you do with fire skills. So, it, it it's a big change. Um... Yeah. Uh, Blizzard 3. You now learn it at 35 as well as Fire 3. 
that's a really good change. Because Blizzard 3 is really important to your rotation at that point in the game, so being able to use it? Great. Great change. Freeze! Basically your main AoE move that you just learn... You just use it. Oh. They swap these two. Alright, maybe it's not so good of a change. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. Oh, they actually buffed its damage. Increased its cast time slightly. And now you can only use it if you're already under Umbral Ice? Oh, that's weird. Literally, all you would do before is use Freeze. Although, with the Blizzard 2 changes, I assume what they want you to do now is use Blizzard 2 into Freeze. And then it gives you Umbral Hearts as well, but you don't get these when you have this for the first time, because you don't have Umbral Hearts yet. Umbral Hearts, by the way, make it to where your next fire skill costs zero mana. So the idea is you stack Umbral Hearts, then you use Flare a bunch of times. It's it's pretty good. Actually, I don't even think you use Flare, because I don't think it even has the most damage. Maybe you do now because of Enhanced Flare. I don't know. We'll get into it when we get into it. Um. Oh yeah, there we go. Umbral Heart bonus. Astral Fire's MP cost increase for fire spells and reduces the MP cost for Flare by one third. Oh yeah, so there you go. You could use Flare a bunch. If you want. So they kind of nerfed Freeze, but kind of buffed it as well? I don't know, it's hard to say. Without actually doing, like, level 90 content, I mean, is, is Black Mage. At level 40, it's probably still usable. Um, This is just the upgrade from Thunder 1. Duration lasts 30 seconds now, that's so good. And Thundercloud still lasts 40. Potency gets decreased slightly on the dot and quite a bit on the initial cast, but I think the extra 6 seconds is a good trade-off for that. Ethereal Manipulation unchanged. Why is it 10 second cooldown? I didn't know that. It's not bad. Flare. Potency reduced, but they added Enhanced Flare. That's what I thought. It no longer removes Umbral Ice. That's interesting. So you can use Flare? Oh. It, yeah, okay. It can only be executed while under the effect of Astral Fire. Okay, so they made Flare the same idea as Freeze. You can't... Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, you can't use Flare now unless you're in Fire Mode, so that was actually not that great of a change. I was like, oh my god, you could just be in Ice Mode and use Flare, but no. Um, yeah, they added Enhanced Flare. Uh, we'll figure out what that is later. Ley Lines! They increase the cast time. Like, from 90 to 120 for seemingly no reason, because they didn't buff it. They just made it to where you use it less. I think it's strange, especially because Ley Lines is so important for Black Mage. I don't know. Uh, it, uh, I mean, I think anyone who plays this class will say, uh, hot take, this is a bad change. All right, there you go. I guess that doesn't make it a hot take, but... Sharpcast, the next Scathe, Fire, Paradox, Thunder... Yeah, 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 it'll do Firestarter Thundercloud. Or you'll get your next Scathe attack! Wow, so useful! Wow, 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 wow! You'll get a 200 potency move that is bad! Wow. Pog. Um. You just get two charges of it now, pretty much. That's it. So you can just hold it. Use Fire for Firestarter, then use Thunder for Thundercloud. That's a good change, because you get both of them. Now, instead of just one or the other. Um, Blizzard 4. Grants Umbral Hearts. You know. You can only use it under Umbral Ice. Hmm. 
both an Ogun and Umbralize to only Umbralize, yeah. Which is a positive change, I think. I don't know, dropping an Ogun was annoying, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, perhaps people will fight me on that. Cast a little bit faster. Yeah. It, it's Blizzard 4 still. Fire 4, same thing. They With the removal, kind of, of Anokian, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, between the Lines is the same as it was. I just feel it's strange. Ley Lines getting increased to 120? I don't know. Uh, Thunder 4, this is the AoE one again. DOT potency reduced. The, uh, initial potency was unchanged. Thunder spell effect duration increased to 40 seconds. That's a lot. This time reduced as well, and the MP cost is reduced, which kind of means nothing, because you usually use Thunder in Umbral Ice anyway, but... It's not bad. It probably... The reason they did that is... It probably lines up better with a rotation now. With later uh, skills. Uh, triple cast, baby. Uh, now has two charges. That's, that's the only change. But, what's funny is you can use Blizzard 4 and then get your three Umbral Hearts and then triple cast Flare. That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> in my opinion, it's pretty funny. Uh, but you kind of have to use Flare with Enhanced Flare now, and I don't know how to get that. I'm gonna just look. I'm just gonna look. It's gotta be here. Oh yeah, they changed Adel and Lucid Dreaming. Uh. Yeah. Adel reduces physical damage dealt and magic damage dealt by even more. And, uh, the one that physical DPS get is the opposite. It's 10% physical, 5% magical. Uh, Lucid Dreaming also heals for a bit more mana per second now. It used to be 50, it's now 55. I say heal, but I guess restores mana would be better. Aspect Mastery, Maim and Mend. Where is Enhanced Flare? Ah, okay. Wait, that's it? Oh, if you use Fire 2, you get Enhanced Flare. And you keep it as long as you're in Fire Mode. Okay, that's really interesting. So you now want to swap... Well, I'm just gonna... Spoiler for you. High Fire 2. You now want to swap from... Blizzard 4 Hold on. Nullifies Astral Fire's MP cost MP uh, for fire spells and reduces MP cost for flare by one third. But it's only for three casts. Which is strange. So they want you to high fire two out of Umbral Hearts and then use Flare twice? That doesn't seem that good, I have to be honest. I mean, I'm kinda glad they added Fire 2 and Blizzard 2 to your rotation, because before they were just dead spells. But, I'm still confused. I, I'm gonna have to play with it at 90. I mean, it's gonna be a while. But, I don't know. A Black Mage main? So, let, let me know how you feel about that. Seems strange. Like, maybe I'm missing something. Um, in any case. Foul. Wow. Potency reduced by a lot. Um, but the AoE damage is better now. Okay. Oh, it's also instant, which is, uh, great. 
So it's a better AoE skill, and it's instant. That's that's pretty good. It just costs a polyglot. It's not too bad. Um, we go down here. It's for the immediate casting of foul. What is the stacking of a second polyglot? There we go. Enhanced Enochion. If you maintain Enochion for 30 seconds, ugh, you gain a polyglot. Also, uh, Enochion's magic damage increases for 10, uh, 10%. Which is good, but Anokia now is just passive, you don't have to activate it. But that means that you have to stay in Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. I mean, that's not that hard. For 30 seconds, that's all? You just have to stay in one or the other for 30 seconds? You don't even have to stay in Astral Fire or Umbral Ice 3, it's just... One? That doesn't seem very difficult. Perhaps I'm missing something, but I, as far as I can tell, they just made Anokian a lot easier to use. Um, Anokian does more damage. Yeah, you get another Polyglot, so that means I guess if you do stuff for 60 seconds, you get two Polyglots, wow. Uh, sorry. I'm getting slightly distracted, but not much. Like, Black Mage got changed kind of a lot. And it's difficult to process all the changes when I'm not a Black Mage main. Because they're kind of complicated. Uh, potency reduced. Um, you now can only use this in Astral Fire. What? Wait, what is this? All MP? Oh, it's just single target flare. But it doesn't get the MP cost reduction that flare does from Blizzard. What? Is this bad? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Umbral Soul. Grants Umbral Ice and one Umbral Heart. I know what Umbral Hearts do, I know what Umbral Ice does. Wait, it can only be used while under Umbral Ice? Wait, why does it matter that it gives Umbral Ice if you can only use it under Umbral Ice? I'm so confused. All this does is give you an Umbral Heart? Blizzard 4 gives you 3! What is this? And you can only use it under Umbral Ice anyway, so you probably have three already. Why is this in the game? P please, Black Mages, tell me. What What are these two skills doing here? They seem so worthless. Xenoglossy. We, we all know what Xenoglossy is. It's just a fat damage move that you use when you have a Polyglot. Uh, it's worse now, though. Yeah, it's the single target version of Foul, essentially, but, um, yeah, it's a lot worse now. Like, potency got nerfed a bunch. Um, okay, Amplifier just gives you a Polyglot. That's, that's pretty good. Paradox. The other thing that we, we didn't check yet. Uh, unaspected damage, potency of 500. You can just use it, I guess. Here in Astral Fire, the duration of Astral Fire is refreshed, and you get a 40% chance to get Fire Starter. The duration of Astral Fire being refreshed, uh, kind of means nothing, because you can just use Fire 1, and it does that, but okay. Uh, um... Next, Fire 3. Yeah, okay, we know what Fire Starter does. 
If you're in ice, you cast it immediately. It requires no MP and refreshes on ice. Which sounds way better? Um, what? Huh? It's not even guaranteed fire starter, which is kind of silly, because fire three is not that good. You have to be under the effect of paradox to use this. You can't use it. Unless you're under the effect of Paradox. Okay. Adds Paradox to your Elemental Gauge. Marker is made active after reaching Astrofire 3, then swapping to Umbral Ice 3, I guess. It can also be made after reaching Umbral Ice 3, gaining um 3 Umbral Hearts, then swapping... Yeah, okay. But that's not hard! Blizzard and Fire become Paradox, and the Paradox marker is made active. Unless they change this class way more than I think, which I'm pretty sure they didn't, you just use Fire 2, Astro Fire 3. Then from Fire 2... Oh, you can't now. Oh, no, you can't. Yeah, no, you can. You just use Blizzard 2. And then you get Paradox. And then you can just use Paradox. And then you use Fire 2, then Blizzard 2, and you can just use Paradox. Yeah. Okay. Weird class, weird class, but okay. Uh, you get Enhanced Enochian to 20%, Pong. Oh, there's the Monophon. Recast time decreased. Which, Iomo does nothing. Maybe it does something, I don't know, maybe it does something for Flare, right? I guess you can Mana Font in the Flare. Oh, hold on, I need, to, I need to wiggle my mouse, I almost got booted. Yo, I'm glad it gave me a noise to tell me that it was gonna get... Uh, yeah, anyway, I, I don't freaking know, man. Here's your polyglots. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's your, um, thing? There it is. It's up there. There's your paradox gauge. Oh, there it is. Right in the middle. So strange. I mean, it, Black Mage is just gonna feel like Black Mage, but better. Because now you have Fire 2 and Blizzard 2 unlocked, essentially. But there are some, like weird things about black mage that i just didn't know before like umbral soul and despair being uh terrible um man i don't know um overall though i think if you played black mage and shadowbringers and you thought they were in a good spot i doubt this is gonna nerf them that much I would be surprised if their overall DPS went down more than a couple percent. I mean, okay, technically thanks to the stat squish, uh, your DPS is going to be going down uh, more than that, but comparatively to other classes now, I mean, uh, you're probably in a good spot. Summoner got uh, completely changed in every way. Um. I have played this class up to 80. It's fun. I've not played it up to 90 yet because, of course, I haven't. But, you know, it's good. I've played Scholar up to 80 as well, obviously, because that's how that works. Well, okay, I guess technically you could have played one and not the other, but... Uh... Ruin. Ignore this, mostly. Except for the cast time. No, uh, cast time did get changed to 1.5 seconds to match with Scholar's change that got reduced to 1.5 seconds as well. Uh, the MP cost is now higher. The potency changing isn't real. I mean, it is, but not really. D don't worry about it for right now. Uh, you've got Carbuncle now. You kind of had Carbuncle before, but then it turned into Eggy if it... And then Eggy Titan, and then Eggy Garuda, and then they were your Carbuncles, and then you could have skinned them up. It's not the same now. 
Okay, it's not the same though. Kind of. Like, Ruby Carbuncle is still gonna be coming for it, but Carbuncle is always there now. And he can use two moves. And it's very weird because he just uses them on his own and you can't tell him when to use them. And a lot of times it's not useful and does nothing. Here's one of them now. Carbuncle will make a barrier around you that absorbs damage. Now I know this says, right? This says orders Carbuncle to execute Radiant Aegis. Maximum charges too can only be executed while Carbuncle summoned. I have the game open right now, alright? I'm a summoner. You cannot... Alright, pretend I didn't say that. You can equip this skill- Oh my god, I cannot believe this. Yeah, at the bottom it says you can't equip it, but... That was just me, uh... Not noticing... That there was another skill at the top of the bar. Alright. If you might be like, oh man, this guy has made such a classic blunder. There's no way I can trust him. I swear, this is the only time I've done that. But. You can use Radiant Aegis. What do you know? Uh, it gives you a shield. It's kind of bad, but it's there. Uh, Physic still exists on the Summoner's Kit. It still sucks. Don't use it. Uh, Ether Charge, kind of irrelevant, because it's just Bahamut's Trance. Um, so we can skip this for now. Don't, don't worry about it. Summon Ruby, also we can skip this, because it does the same thing as Ifrit. Uh, Gem Shine... Kind of relevant. All of your summon attacks, at least your first of your summon attacks, have been changed to gem shine. So they now all are this move. Instead of being three different moves. Kind of. I mean, they're still three different moves, I mean, but they're all this move. Um... This means nothing right now, don't worry about it. Uh, Fester. You learn earlier now, the potency's higher. It doesn't give your additional effects, which are... It does bonus damage based on your dots, because there's no dots now. Uh, you can spam the hell out of this thing now, as well. Your rotation, weirdly enough, is just... Use Energy Drain, and then use Faster twice. It's strange, but it's good. Sorry, the song playing right now is the Feast theme. It's a little strange. I'm going to reduce the volume a little bit, because this one's a little louder. But, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, you kept Res, which is great. This, this class would have, like, two buttons that you could press if it didn't. Summon Topaz, we could ignore. Topaz Rune, we could ignore. Summon Emerald, Emerald Rune, we can ignore. Outburst. Is just AoE Ruin. Don't worry about it. This, though, is your second Eggy move. Because all your Eggies used to have two moves. And this is your second one. But this is just an AoE move. So, each of your Eggies now have an AoE move. They're a little different, but they're essentially the same, and they all work through Precious Brilliance. And here they are. Ruby, Topaz, Emerald Outburst. Kind of. It's not really what they are, because... Your Carbuncles go away rather quickly. Because, wow, here's Ifrit. And now, all your things are irrelevant now. Oh yeah, you also uh, get Ruin too. Spo spoiler, you get ruined too. Uh, oh, but ruin two 
instead of being the same as it was for Scholar, it's now just an upgrade to Ruin. It's not just a instant cast, weaker version, it's just stronger. Still has the cast time. Anyway, so now we have Ifrit Eggy, which is what Ruby Carbuncle turns into, which, to be fair, is still relevant, irrelevant at 90, but most of the time you're not going to be at 90, so this is relevant, actually. Uh, this rushes forward and does damage to enemies in a 5 Yom Cone. So if they're in a line, using Ifrit Eggy first is good, because it use, does an AoE behind it. And, you know, it does pretty good damage. Um, then after you use it, it disappears, and then you can use Ruby Ruin. Wow. Um... Which is this move again, Gemshine. And then Ruby Outburst. Which uh, is the AoE move version of Ifrit. So you get those two moves. I mean, I think you're essentially getting the idea of what this class does, right? Summon Titan. He does... An AoE around him, except he does it to the first enemy. Well, technically he does it to the enemy you're targeting, but his AoE doesn't usually hit everything, so it's not all that good. But it does the same amount of damage as if for it into 600 to 600. And then, uh, you get the same idea, you know, Topaz Ruin, your single target. You get a single target move for all three of them that do damage. Um, you can do four with Titan and Garuda, two with Ifrit. Ifrit's hits harder, Garuda's are faster and are weaker, Titans are in the middle. Uh, Pain Flare is just, um, AoE Fester now. Um, I mean, it was kind of that before, I guess, but it doesn't work the same way, so, uh, just, you know what to do. You energy drain, uh, in the pain flare twice for AoE, but hey, then you get energy siphon, so you now you don't need to use, um, energy drain. You just use energy siphon and AoE attacks. And, um... Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty good. Potency's increased. You know? It's it's, it's not bad. Um, get Ruin 3, and then all your Ruby, Topaz, Emerald Ruin also gets buffed as well. 360, 300, 180. Then you get Dreadworm Trance. And now, essentially, Ruin uh, is removed from your rotation altogether. I mean, okay, these three are still here. But normal Ruin 3 just gets removed because you get Astral Impulse, which you can use every time. Because, alright, what you want to do, you Dreadworm Trance, you spam Astral Impulse, at the end of Astral Impulse you get your Gemstone, so then you summon Ifrit, use Ruby Ruin, then you summon Titan, then use Topaz Ruin, then you summon Garuda, then use Emerald Ruin, then you Energy Drain, and use... Uh, Fester twice, and then Dreadworm Trance is back up, so you pretty much never need to use Ruin. Um, Astral Flow is just an off GCD that you can use every time you use Dreadworm Trance. You can use it one time to shoot, shoot laser. Death Flare's the same. Uh, every time you use it, you can use it once. Shoot laser. And then, eventually, when you get Phoenix, you can use this and... I mean, not this, but a different version of this uh, for Phoenix. Um, oh yeah, every time you use Energy Drain, you can use Ruin 4 now. Uh, so that's another off GCD, which, you know, just does some damage. It's alright. Uh, Searing Light, just an AoE damage buff that your Carbuncle uses use it off cooldown it's not it's not that complicated summon bahamut is honestly just dreadworm trance but better 
yeah, pr pretty much. Oh, also, not not just that, because he also attacks, and will use Worm Wave and stuff. Yeah, so anyway, this class isn't that complicated, even though I'm talking forever about it. Also, and Kindle Bahamut does 10 million now? Interesting. Oh, they also made it... Apparently this wasn't a thing before, because I didn't play Summoner before the changes. I know, I know. But, uh, in Kindle Phoenix and in Kindle Bahamut are now on the same button, so depending on what trance you are, it switches to that button. So really, this class has like five, six buttons. Like, this is just Ruby Ruin, Topaz Ruin, Emerald Ruin, still. You know? Ruby Disaster, Topaz Disaster, Emerald Disaster. It's just the, your AoE skills. So these are just your single target AoEs. And then you get Phoenix, which are essentially the same moves as Bahamut, except Phoenix has a heal. Instead of Bahamut's um, death laser. So that's nice. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, then you get Ruby, Topaz, Emerald Catastrophe, which is the upgrade to, um, Disasters. But then, you do actually get another move. Near the end of the game. <laughs> Which is the Crimson Cyclone and Strike, Mountain Buster, and Slipstream. Once you're in each of the uh, modes, once you're in Ifrit mode, you can use Crimson Cyclone into Crimson Strike once. Once you're in um, Titan mode, you can use Mountain Buster like three times, I think. I don't know, it's, uh, it's pretty good though. And then Slipstream, you do a big AoE, and then it leaves an AoE on the ground that you can do. And then your summoning attacks, where they summon and do their attack. Well, uh, those get better at level 90, and they become bigger too. You get the big Ifrit, big Titan, and big Garuda, and they all do their big attack when they, when they do their thing. Otherwise, it's the exact same, but their attack gets better, and they look cooler, so it makes you feel better. Um, but yeah, the class is essentially just a different class now. Hopefully I explained it good enough. Um, it's pretty simple. You just go through each of your dudes and use your two skills on each of your dudes. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's a lot of fun though, despite what I'm saying. My favorite caster now. Ugh, give me a second, I need to drink some water. There we go. I really should just mute that tab. It's probably gonna... Oh, I can turn up the volume now. It's probably gonna make for a lesser... viewing experience every time I open up my tab and you hear, like, random house music. Eh, the volume on the music's probably fine. Anyway, uh, this is a class that I like a lot. Love Red Mage. Most people who play this game love Red Mage. They're relatively simple, very satisfying, very useful. Uh, Verays is all I gotta say. They got changed a good amount in this expansion, and in my opinion, all for the better. So. Repost costs less black and white mana. Jolt gives you less, but that's fine. For Thunder, wow, for Thunder gives you so much less. Wait, hold on. Did they change them a lot on the PTR? <laughs> Oops. Well, whatever. We're still going to go over it. Potency changed by a little bit. Black Mana, it gives you is like cut in half. Uh, Korra Core now has two charges, which is weird. 
And it has a lower recast time. I don't even know why they added that. Like, that's your charge-in move? Yeah, I don't know. I guess. Man. Um... I mean, I guess you could use it again near the end of your combo or during your combo to just do more damage. I don't know. Uh, Verrero. Oh, you know what? Actually, I know why they did this. And I'm glad they did this. I'm thinking back on it. When you use, like, Manification or whatever your, like, level... Yeah, yeah, it's Manification. When you use that before... You would get your second melee combo, but Korra Korra wouldn't be up again, so you could only use it once. Well, I mean, you couldn't use your melee combo once, but you had to walk up to the enemy to use it again, so this will make it feel a lot better in that regard. Uh, Barrero got the same change. Scatter. Acceleration potency increased? Like... If you swift cast it, it does more damage now? That's weird, considering you'd never full casted this move anyway. That's probably not what it is. Uh, we'll find out what it is soon, though, I'm sure. Uh, potency of Earth Thunder and Verero 2 increased, which is good, because they kind of were weak. They are really good early. Kind of not that good late, but they were fine. You know, you just use them to use your other moves. No. That's not true. Wait, five second, five second, five second, two second. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It is. It is true. I'm like, missing something. I just know it. Uh, ver fire and ver stone potency increased. The mana that it gives you was decreased again. The other ones, that's so strange to me. Well, kind of. I know why they did it. We'll get to it when we get there, but... Changed black and white mana gauge cost by 10. The, your melee combo now costs less. This also has two charges now. That's good to know. For the same reason, I'm sure. So you could use your combo twice more easily. Engagement. It's the same thing as displacement. I mean, okay, it's not the same thing, but... Weird that they changed it from, like, the learning level. It's so strange to me. I guess they want you to have displacement and engagement at the same time, because engagement's not that good, so learning it at level 72 is kind of strange. Uh, but yeah, essentially, if you don't want to backstep and you just want to do more damage, you use engagement instead. But... They have the same potency. So it's a little weird to me. Especially because you usually want to displace to use your combo. But I guess if you're fighting Titan, you don't want to use displacement. I don't know. Uh, Flesh was buffed, which is strange to me. That move I felt was really good. It's just a random off GCD do damage. Redoublement. Reduce the mana cost. Just number another one of your melee combo. They added another charge to acceleration. Oh, 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 oh! This is the thing. Ensures the next ver thunder three, ver arrow three, or impact can be cast immediately. Wait, ver thunder three or ver arrow three? Did they add that to the game? That wasn't a thing in the game before. Updated, 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 updated. Wait. Wait, 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 what? Oh, here it is, here it is. For Thunder Verero 3. Is this an AoE? No, this is just your normal cast. Is this your normal cast? It's a potency of 380? That's so good. That's a 50% chance of... Oh, actually, I think it had a 50% chance before already. But damn. Oh, and you get Magic Barrier, too. That's pretty nice. Whack. Okay, so they kind of changed how Acceleration works. 
Um, okay, so you can just accelerate into Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow. I assume it works for Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow 1 as well, but maybe I'm wrong with that. Um, it lets Impact be cast immediately as well, but it increases the damage of Impact. Oh, that's what Scatter turns into. 70. Impact down here. It goes to 260. That's really good. Yo, I like that change. I might actually, like, use Acceleration now. I know if you're, you're probably thinking, Bro, you weren't using Acceleration? That move is so good for you. Like, you're bad. It's like, okay, fair, but it was lame. But now, like... I, I like it. I like it. You could just use it to uh, fix your mana after using um, Verflare or Verholy as well. It's very good. Molten is the same. Which I think is kind of fair. Vercure is the same. Wait, they buffed Physic on Summoner. I'd barely glossed over that, because it didn't say updated. But look at this. Physic. Cure Potency 400. Now, I know you might be like, well, they didn't change it at all. But if you have ever played this game, you know that Vercure is very usable. Um, and Physic is very not. And Vercure has 50 less potency. Granted, you could use it twice, but still, like... I've got to be missing something. They had to have buffed Physics Potency. This physics Potency on Summoner did like two healing before. I don't know. Uh, Contra Sex Day. Or 60, I don't know. I'm gonna freaking. I'll get banned for saying that word. Reduce Potency, which I guess is fair. Deleted. Oh, bro, they. Unnerfed Emboldened. Nice. Doesn't suck now. Increases own magic damage and damage dealt by nearby party members. Oh, and now it doesn't matter what team comp you have. It's just good. That's so nice. The effects have been completely... Okay, what does it do now? Oh, it just increases your black and white mana by 50. Oh. Gives you six stacks of manification. Which increase your magic damage dealt by 5%. Yo, what? That's awesome. Bro, old manification was ass to use. I mean, look, it was a good move, but using it was lame. So I'm I'm hype about that for sure. Jolt 2, a little weaker, fair enough. I think it's good enough as is. So, you know, uh, impact kind of buff to be honest. Because using impact off of acceleration is pog. Ver Flare has been completely revamped? My ass it has. Uh, oh. No, yeah, it's kind of been revamped, actually. Tends to become Ver Fire ready increases if white mana is higher than black mana. And then the other one's the same. It, which... It was like that already. Mana stack cost? Mana stack cost? What does that mean? What? Well, it's AoE now, which is nice. Um, increases black mana by 11. 20% chance of becoming over fire ready. It already had that, but it increases to 100% chance. If your white mana is higher, it already had that as well. What? And for Holy's just the same move, but what's the mana stack cost? I don't even know what that is. Uh, Reprise is up here. Uh, Scorch. Scorch has been changed to be AoE as well. It's essentially the same otherwise. Resolution. 
Deals unaspected damage. Is this just an OGCD? Deals unaspected damage to all enemies in a straight line before you. Hold on, gotta reduce the volume of the music a little bit. It's going a little lamb. Potency of 750. Okay, so it's AoE again. Combo action is Scorch? So you just Scorch in the resolution? Oh, it just comes after Scorch. Just increases black and white mana. What? I'm so lost. And by lost, I mean this um, is not a very difficult skill to understand. What is a mana stack cost? What is that? Are they talking about monification? They've gotta be, right? Uh, enchanted thingy-mabobber. Cost less, cost less. Cost less. Oh, Molten A and Reprise give... Wait, just Molten A? Molten A grants a mana stack. Oh, your whole combo grants a mana stack. Okay. What does that do? Adds a mana stack to your balance gauge upon landing Enchanted Repost Zwerha... Swedisha, um, redoublement, multine, up to a maximum of three. On gaining three, you can use Verflare or Verholy. Oh, I get it. Okay. So essentially, it's the exact same thing as before, except. With the exception of Moltene, which you used for AoE instead of your normal combo. If you use Moltene three times in an AoE, you can now Verflare or Verholy, which are also AoEs now. So your AoE is just cracked uh, in this expansion, which I'm okay with. Um, is the freaking same? Uh, 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 Um, 3-3, Earth Under 2, Vero 2, 140, Ver Fire to 330, Ver Stone to 330, that's all at 84. Oh, and you can use Acceleration twice at 88, okay. That's really neat, actually. There's your mana stocks right at the bottom. Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about Blue Mage. S sorry in advance. <laughs> uh, it's a fun class. Um, but I can make an entire video just based on Blue Mage, and I'm not doing it right now. Especially because, hey, they haven't updated it yet. So. Wow. Okay. A lot of changes. A lot of changes. Um, God, the mages almost like all got a ton of changes. Like, damn. Anyway. <laughs> uh, that's going to be it for this video. See you guys next time. Peace.